Hey you, and welcome. My name is Mike, and in this old video, we are telling the story of Breaking Bad. Uh, well, I guess it's really a, a wanna wannabe Breaking Bad. It's more like Breaking Sad. This story takes us to Halifax, Nova Scotia, and it's about what happened when Taylor Sampson went to meet William Sanderson. Two very bright college students, Taylor studying physics, William a med student. And still to this Day, we have so many questions that remain like unanswered, even though, you know, when you, when, if you were to ask the court's opinion, it's all settled, done, dusted. But it took a long ass time to get there. So let's give it a go. So this whole video takes us to the capital of Nova Scotia, and that is Halifax. The last city you'd encounter before diving headfirst into the cold, frigid North Atlantic Ocean. It's a city of about 450,000 people. And you know what? Those people and some from the surrounds might want to partake in some schooling. There's numerous colleges and universities in Nova Scotia, and one of the top ones in the area, perhaps even Canada, well, I mean, okay, it's in, it's in the top 12, but that's, that's, which is, you know, it's pretty good is Dalhousie University, located in downtown Halifax, South End. It's a research-intensive university and has a broad range of academic programs, from med school to the arts. You get your fraternities and it's home to approximately 20,000 students. It is a big enough university. And attending in the year 2015 was 22-year-old Taylor Sampson. Taylor was a local, or local enough, he grew up in Amherst, Nova Scotia, a small town of about 10,000 people, maybe two hours north of Dalhousie University. And he grew up there with his parents and his younger brother, Connor. And by all accounts, they were a fairly close family. They supported each other, true tick and tin, and were grand. Taylor was studying physics at Dalhousie, if you can believe that, but when he wasn't studying physics, he was playing guitar. He was playing softball, baseball, and he was known as a goofy, fun-loving lad. He would teach calculus to earn a little extra money, but he would also put his classes on YouTube to help with those who couldn't pay. He was a decent fella. So, after T is continuous, over some interval, it's gonna exist on A to B, and then we're gonna define a function G of X. Thank you for watching our videos and please see our next section, Calculus 2. Someone who was more than excited to be a member of the Sigma Chi fraternity in Dollhouse. And he was living the good college life. You know, you got your party, you got your chicks, you got your just having a great time as a young adult. Setting out on the first steps towards blah blah blah. Glory days, as one of Springsteen's most depressing songs goes. But college isn't cheap. College life isn't uh, cheap. So, so Taylor, he had to get, you know, a couple of them side gigs, right? I mean, he was already teaching, you know, calculus in his spare time, but he, as a second side gig, what he did to was deal. Just a little. He began dealing. To make a few extra books, he began selling weed. Like, nothing crazy or anything like that. Just a a little bit on the side just to get through, you know, we all gotta do what y'all gotta do to make, to pay the bills at the end of the day. Now, when you start hearing about this case, you'll hear drug dealers kind of come up, come up a lot, but this isn't like drug dealers, like shady guys in back alleys or in nightclub bathrooms who are selling you some shite. This is regular ass college kids who were just dealing a little bit of weed to, you know, pay tuition. That sort of thing. And it wasn't something Taylor was planning on, on staying doing. In fact, weed was already well on its way towards legalization in the great state of Canada. So I don't think there were long-term aspirations here for the physics student. And so, it was in late summer, August 2015, that Taylor was introduced to another student in Dalhousie University. Introduced via Devil's Lettuce. His name was William Sanderson. A guy named Jeff, fucking Jeff, introduced him, William himself, looking to, you know, he was he was in the little bit of drug dealing business himself and he was looking to buy some quantities of weed he himself could sell for distribution. William, like Taylor, had been dealing true college to pay the bills. Pills, mushrooms, that sort of thing. And he was looking to expand his operations, I guess you could say. 
22-year-old William Sanderson was from Truro, and was about to become a med student in Dalhousie. He had previously studied medicine at another institution, and he was kind of an all-star to be honest. He was a track runner, an all-Canadian if you can believe that, but he was also working in a care home to help pay the bills too. He lived in downtown Halifax, not a great distance from Taylor's, close to Dalhousie. And William lived in his apartment with his girlfriend, Sonia. So all that kind of sort of takes us to the 15th of August 2015, which, which was a Saturday, that evening. At about 10pm that evening, Taylor Sampson told his girlfriend, Mackenzie, he was just gonna, just gonna pop out for a few minutes, be right back. He left his stuff still in the apartment, he didn't take his wallet, he didn't take his, he had a chronic liver, liver condition, he didn't take like, his medicine, like it, literally it seemed like from what he had left in his own place, he would be right back. All he took with him was a big black duffel bag. He's out the door, back in a couple of minutes. Mackenzie believed that bag had, w was full, full of weed, and she would be right. And he was not back. He did not return that night. Nor did Taylor Sampson show up to the family dinner the following day. Uh, you know, family dinner in Amherst on a Sunday, which they would have all the time. Taylor would always be there. His mom was expecting him. He was a no-show. Marla began calling him then to no avail. And the police were notified that evening that Taylor Sampson was now missing. His family raced up to Halifax to, you know, becoming very, very worried about this straight away. And the investigation began proper on the 17th of August, 2015, the Monday. They began the investigation where they tend to do, with the phone, Taylor's phone. And who was the last person to contact Taylor before he went missing? Who was the last person who was calling him, texting him, ringing him, all that? Old Willie. They had arranged to meet that Saturday night with Taylor coming over to William Sanderson's with weed, 20 pounds of weed uh, for, for William to sample. They had met previously, uh, about a couple of days just before to, I mean, essentially Taylor was selling weed, huge amounts of it to William, but when they previously met, uh, William wasn't happy with the quality. So he's bringing another more over again, so this time they could do a deal, do a big deal. Taylor, he was planning on getting out of the thing. He's probably trying to sell the last of all his shit. So William had been calling him and texting Taylor that night. And the police, they learned of that like right quick. In fact, the police then began looking for William. They called into a care home where William worked, but he wasn't there. The other employees, they contacted William saying, hey, you'll never guess what, five O's looking for you. All right, William then, he contacted the police himself. He went in to speak with them. of your text messaging out there, the next plus, of your messages um, with you and Taylor. Um, is there anything else that you think is important for us to know? No, nothing else there. Okay. So just to clarify one point, so in your messages with, um, with Taylor. He told the police Taylor never showed up. He was waiting for him. He sat on the step, but he was a no-show. But he even showed the police texts where he had texted Taylor asking him where the heck and heck he was. Because he definitely wasn't at Willie's. I walked out and he wasn't there. Mm -hmm. I sat on my doorstep for a while. Mm -hmm. There was nothing to do with steps. He wasn't there. And two other people showed up to go to Pookie's, mm -hmm. I think. And I walked them up mm -hmm. to Pookie's. And then they left and I stayed at Pookie's. And what about phone calls during that time? I called Taylor when I, I had a missed call from him mm -hmm. at 11. Because mm -hmm. on your phone it says that there was a call at 1024. Yeah. So and that was him calling me. Okay. To say. And I don't think I picked that up. Did it have a time? Yeah, it did. It had like 36 seconds or whatever. On yeah. That thing there so I don't know if I. That's the only one I could call. That I okay. Um, had he ever been to your place before? No. Is there anything else is, you feel that's important for us to know? Okay. Right. You have my number. Yeah. 
Um, I'm just going to ask that you don't destroy any of those text messages with anyone until just in the event that we need them or anything. Yeah, and if we have any other questions, we'll be in touch with you. Yeah. Okay, perfect. You can come on out with me right now. And so William left the interview, uh, but he, he let the police, you know, examine his phone, do all that kind of thing. Police take pictures of it, downloading his texts, and they kind of like, straight away, started to notice some inconsistencies between what, between what William had told them and what was on his phone. One was that William had said he was just popping over. We were just gonna hang out, you know, chill, maybe do a little bit of weed. But of course they learned pretty swiftly that Taylor Thompson was bringing over 20 pounds. William was gonna buy it for $40,000. The other text was that Taylor had showed up. They could tell by the texts. William had said he never showed, but Taylor had texted saying he was right outside. But where the hell was he now? It was on the 18th of August when William was back home with his family in Truro that the police busted down the door of William Sanderson's apartment. What the police were thinking was that they had gone over to do a drug, dealer, drug deal and Taylor was being held captive, that he kidnapped Taylor and was holding him in his apartment. But they didn't find him there. What they did find was an empty gun box, a dirty bathroom, and a spotless bathtub, and a shower curtain and bath mat with a nearby receipt showing they had just been purchased. What they also saw was something odd. CCTV, like right there in uh, William's apartment, in his hallway. It was the only one they saw, so it seemed very likely that William had put it up there himself. In fact, when asked about it, William would say he'd put it up there uh, as he was, you know, I guess the jig is up, guys, I'm selling, selling drugs. So, you know, it's for his own safety. But, uh, well, it would also not be for the safety of others. They found the DVR-4, that surveillance system, and after watching it, they arrested William Sanson because this was what was on it. It showed Taylor Sampson carrying the big duffel bag and entering William's apartment, but he is never seen leaving. Taylor's blood was found in the apartment, along with a 9mm handgun, also with Taylor's blood in it. As if the gun had been like right up against him when the trigger was pulled. In the basement of the building, a big bag full of weed was found also. It looked like someone had been storing all that weed away, like a great little saver. They had been storing it away, ready for just a long winter ahead. Very, very long winter for William Sanderson, as you will see. Sanderson was questioned once again, and this time he had quite the story to tell. So, well, right now, I know that, you know, you've said a few things in here to me about, you know, other people being there. So, is that the case, or? telling me yes it is. So what I'm not understanding is how come you don't want to tell me the name? Because I don't have a name. That's why. You don't because have I can't prove that anyone was there. You can't prove that anybody was there? No. And I don't have names. So that's the point. So. Okay, well can you tell what time they showed up? Just after eleven. Just after eleven? It just, no, it was sort of just after Taylor got there, but they came through. He said, yes, okay. Pfft, you're dying. Taylor came over, we were shooting the shit, that sort of stuff. Then, two men broke in, wearing morph su suits. Like this? Even earlier. <gasps> he didn't know who they were. They climbed through the window, and he thought they were there to scare Taylor. Maybe deal gone bad, rivals, whatever. To scare, scare him, like, to, like, for what, you know what I mean, for what purpose? It was to scare him, you know what I mean, like to scare him into... Just, I don't know, scare him out of dealing. Okay. Yeah. I know he owed money. Okay. They were just talking to Taylor. Taylor didn't get up. I guess they had a gun on him. They ordered William to turn off the CCTV, and when he was out of the room, he heard a gunshot. Now when you say they, that they had a gun on, what, what do you mean by that? Like, did they... Pointed that he was pointed at them. 
Okay. Then, then what happened? Then I shut off the surveillance. So you shut it off yourself? Okay. Was that because they asked you to do that? When he came back into the room, they were stuffing Taylor's body into that black duffel bag he had brought with him. I put Taylor in the bag with the weed. They put him in the bag with the weed? I mean, like, they, they physically put him in there? Okay, well, what was going on with him when they put him in there? Like, was he... Do you see what I'm saying? Was he... Was he... Was he dead? Or alive? Or... Because a minute ago they were talking to him, right? There was a gunshot. I didn't see what happened. Then there was a lot of blood. They put him in the bag. They went out. Then they, they fled out of the window like Batman. Or a green man, more, more accurately. When you saw these guys, how, describe them. Describe, just pick one of them and describe them to me. Six footish. Dressed all black. They had like a morph suit face. Like a morph suit, black morph suit. Morph suit? suit? I'm not sure what you mean. Like a Hispanic suit. Like the blue men wear or something like that? That's a morph suit. Okay. So they both had those on? Morph suits under their clothing. Okay. By the way, Taylor Sampson was like 6'5", 220, there was also 20 pounds of weed in there, plus 40 rand in cash. So that's a strong ass duffel bag if you ask me, like whoa, what's that made out of? Because I gotta get me one of those. William then, not knowing what to do, he, he cleaned up the scene. He cleaned up the bath, that's why, you know. So as you can imagine, William was charged with murder. The story is pretty ridiculous, I mean also they found the weed in the basement. So it's like, poof, I mean, those guys who broke in, right? I mean, they are killers, but they're not thieves, for God's sake. Shocking news about two Dalhousie University students. Both are 22 years of age. Tonight, one is dead. The other is charged with his murder. Taylor Sampson was last seen on Saturday night. The police believe he was killed in Halifax, and they are still searching for his body. The accused is a varsity athlete about to enter medical school who was arrested Tuesday night and remains in custody tonight. We have learned today that police believe Taylor Sampson was murdered in an apartment just a block away from Dalhousie. Court documents list that as the home where the accused lived. William Sanderson was just days away from starting med school. Today, he was charged with first-degree murder. The 22-year-old Dalhousie student is accused of killing fellow student Taylor Sampson. Investigators began to determine there very well may be some criminality associated to this missing person. It was very uncharacteristic of him not to be in contact with his family, not to be in contact with his friends. The 22-year-old physics student was last seen Saturday evening. He told friends he was going for a walk and left his wallet and keys behind. On Tuesday night, police arrested Sanderson in Dartmouth. Police say Sampson was murdered in Halifax, just a block from campus. The accused has a Bachelor of Science degree in kinesiology from Dalhousie. The university confirms Sanderson is a varsity athlete on the roster for the Dalhousie Tigers men's track and field team. Police said the two knew each other but wouldn't talk about a motive. Sampson's body has not been found yet. The police would later question friends, neighbours, that sort of thing. And there were a few different stories about what had happened. Sonia, William's girlfriend, said he had asked her to vacate the apartment that night, and she came home around midnight. When she did, she said there was bleach on the kitchen floor, and he had been cleaning up. William said three men had come over, rival drug dealers, and there had been a fight. Later, when Sonia would ask William if one of those men was Taylor, when, you know, Taylor Sampson was reported missing, William said no. Never seen that guy before. William would also text another friend saying they had them the deal, him and Taylor, but Taylor ripped him off, sold him some shit weed. Fucker. But what likely happened in William Sanderson's apartment was what his friends and neighbours heard. That night, across the hall, was Justin Blades on the same track team as William and Pookie McCabe. They had been chilling in their apartment that night when they heard a bang. Then they heard knock knock knocking on their door. They opened it. It was William. He said nothing to them, he just turned around, walked back into his own apartment, across the hall. Pookie, Justin, followed him in, and inside his apartment they saw a man, covered in blood, sitting slumped over on William Sanderson's, at William Sanderson's kitchen table, and around him, bloody money and weed. They quickly noped 
noped right out of there, but they did return a little bit later, and this time when they went back into William's apartment, but he was gone. But they saw bloody streaks leading to his bathroom. They then left again. The CCTV in the building was turned off at one point. Likely what happened, William took Taylor's body into his bath, dismembered him, put him in a bag, left. Taylor's blood was also found in his car. Later, CCTV showed William removing items from his own apartment while wearing gloves, and some of these items were later found in Truro at his parents' home, on, on his parents' land. The next morning then, the smell of bleach was very, very strong, and Justin happened to just bump into William the, the next morning, and he said William was Grant. Not a bother on him, like nothing had happened, not a quiet night last night, you know? In the William Sanderson murder trial saw more of his police interrogation on Wednesday. Sanderson stands accused of killing 22-year-old Taylor Sampson. Both men were students at Dalhousie University when it's alleged the crime took place. Detective Constable Roger Sayer, a member of the Halifax Regional Police, was once again on the witness stand. The jury saw hours of video of Sanderson being questioned by police. In it, the 24-year-old is seen crying and is repeatedly asked by officers where Taylor Sampson is and if he's still alive. Eventually, Sanderson tells police that intruders broke into his Henry Street apartment. He says he heard a single gunshot and believes Taylor was shot in the back of the head. William Sanderson would go on trial for the murder of Taylor Sampson in 2017. It should be noted, by the way, that the body of Taylor Sampson, still to this day, has not been found. So why did he kill him? Drugs ultimately were just a means to an end. It really had nothing to do with rival drug dealers, anything like that. Like a lot of, you know, if you read about it, you hear drug dealers. So it wasn't a drug dealer at all, just means to an end. The real means was just some cheddar cheese. William was deep in debt. He owed 70 grand to a credit company. It was causing huge problems in his life. His parents were freaking out. So what prosecution says happened, he lured Taylor over under the pretense of buying 20 pounds of weed off him for 40 grand. He had no plans on buying it. He lured Taylor over, he murdered him, he took the weed, and was gonna sell it himself. Mere hours after Taylor's death, William texted a friend, saying, yeah, just paid off my student loan. But that wasn't Willie's story, nor his defense's story about what really happened in that apartment. He said they'd been over, they'd been chatting, shooting shit, this and that, when all of a sudden, Taylor lunged at him. William, not knowing what to do, he panicked, pulled out a shooter, shot him. And he knew he would have to make this all go away, lest he be charged with murder and, of course, drug dealing. He was greatly in debt. He was scared. And, of course, if any of this came to light his future career as a doctor, well, sayonara to that one. That 40 grand wouldn't have... He wouldn't have killed him, you know, just for the 40 grand, because that wasn't enough to pay off the debt. Even though it was, like, more than half the debt. Did that happen? Was William's story true that it was his self-defense? Well, it seems out of character for Taylor to just randomly attack somebody. He was never described as that kind of person at all. And you gotta remember when Pookie and Justin went into William Sanders' apartment, they seen a guy, they didn't know it was Taylor, slumped over, sitting at the kitchen table covered in blood. Not exactly, like, slumped over on the table, not exactly like an attacking position. At the end of the trial, William was found guilty of first-degree murder. He was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 25 years. But that wasn't the end of it. An appeal would be successful, and it was mostly built on the fact the defense hired a private investigator to interview people. He was, in fact, the person who found both Pukim Cabe and Justin Blades, since they had both since moved out of the province. When he interviewed Puki and Justin, uh, the PI who was working for the defense, he gave all the information he got to the prosecution. Fucking traitor. In 2023, William Sanderson went on trial again. The arguments went more or less the same as they had before, with William saying it was in self-defense. If it was a planned murder, why wouldn't he have turned off the CCTV in the first place? 
Why would he shoot when he knew he had neighbors just next door? But the testimony of Taylor sitting at the table, dead, doesn't exactly match a self-defense. I mean, he was sitting at like, it was like he was sitting at the and he'd been surprised and then instantly, instantly killed. The prosecution said, okay, yeah, he didn't turn off CCTV. He, he knew neighbors were going to be still killed. You don't have to be a master, mastermind murderer to still be a murderer. And Taylor Sampson still had not been found. Though William would say he dumped the body into a river which ran into the Bay of Fundy, not far from Truro, his family home. That definitely seems uh, very likely. He would, like when they were tracking what he had been doing in the following days after Taylor's death, he was found to have gone to Truro in that direction. So it seems very likely that Taylor was dumped into a bay in the Atlantic, which makes it even more likely that Taylor will never be found. At the end of the second trial, William Sanderson was found guilty of second degree murder, which is an automatic life sentence, but he will be eligible for parole by 2030. And so ends the story of Taylor Sanderson and William Sanderson, who definitely, I think, had been watching far too much Breaking Bad. It's, it's like that, that story Mark Twitchell, the other one I covered, of that guy who was watching too much Dexter and decided, hey, I could do that. Well, I think William Sanderson watched Breaking Bad and thought, hey, I could do that. When he couldn't do jack shit, he decided to rip off a small time drug dealer like Taylor Sampson, and he ended up ending his own life. Ending Taylor is, I mean, who gives a shit about William Sampson's life at this point? But he ended Taylor Sampson's life. Enough about him, though. The search for Taylor Sampson still goes on, and likely if what William Sanderson said is true, it will be going on for a long, old time. This is the second story I've covered set in Halifax, by the way, for such a small city. Um, I also covered the case of uh, Christopher Garnier. Garnier. Who gives a shit how you pronounce his name? Screw him. But yeah, that's a lot happening in like one very, very small area. But the folks should always be on the other victims, on Taylor Sampson, like trying to find Taylor Sampson, not on Garnier or whatever you pronounce his name. Who cares? He sucks Willie. Just like, just like Willie. Oh yeah, got his ass. Just like greed and weed, got Willie in the ass. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you being here watching this little video of me. It means a lot as always. Um. So yeah, I guess, I always like running out of things to talk about at the end of these old videos, but sure, you know me at this point, I think. See you in the next video. Be in a couple of days, you know, so until then, take care of each other and yourselves, please. Because I love you. Thank you.